In this lesson, I want to begin walking you through three practical applications of freestyle, this one being a kind of generic cartoony look that can be applied to characters like Baker here. So let's take a look around our scene, see how it's set up, uh, which is very simple. We have one area light that does have shadows enabled, ray traced shadows with eight samples, a square area shape with a size of five. Again, we are of course in Blender internal. We uh, have our character geometry here, standing on a cylindrical shaped ground plane that uh, pretty much is only there to catch the shadows from Baker onto the ground. And then we have our camera. So if I hit zero to look into the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and render this to see what we have at the beginning. As you can see, very simple setup, no materials applied. And uh, before we jump into freestyle and start to customize our line strokes, First, I want to work out our materials because when it comes to cartoony rendering, um, a toon style shader goes hand in hand with the line strokes. So uh, let's split our window so I can make the left one over here the 3D view. Let's select our character, head over to the materials panel and add a new material. Let's call this toon underscore orange. And to enable Toon Style rendering under the Diffuse dropdown, let's switch from the default Lambert to uh, the Toon Style. And uh, as you can see in the preview here, what Toon rendering is, is it's a very stark contrast, unrealistically stark contrast between the parts of your geometry that are directly hit by light and the parts of your geometry that are covered in shadow. So if we render it as it is, and a couple things to notice is unlike our preview, our shadow areas are not actually black, they're more of a gray that look like a Lambert shading. And that's because I have ambient occlusion enabled in our world at a value of one being added to our scene. So that's why we're not getting black uh, like in our preview. And right off the bat, this doesn't really look like a tune shader, it just looks like he's extremely shiny. Even though these highlights are not specular values, they're part of the diffuse. So to uh, include specular real quick, we can also change that shading model from the default cook tour to uh, tune. And let's render that. And now the specular is adding to the tune highlight effect where we can get kind of a three tiered shading approach, white, um, light gray, and then dark gray. So uh, even though that is kind of a cool visual feature, I'm actually going to turn specular off completely uh, for this image and just focus on the diffuse which uh, I will enable a ramp to give us a few more options for dialing in our diffuse shading. And for this first flag on the left, I don't want it to be transparent, so let's click on that and drag the alpha value all the way up to one. And also the color, let's go pick an orange, about like that, then lower the value to kind of a mid-range, about in there. Then hover over the color swatch, control C to copy it, click our second flag, paste the color, click on the swatch, and then drag the value all the way up to white. So now we have a light orange, which will eventually represent the highlights, and then a darker orange that will represent the shadows. And if we render that without changing any other settings, we get kind of a weird result, one that I uh, wasn't really expecting. So um, first let's try to change the color of our diffuse because it looks like the shadowed areas are still drawing from this diffuse color. So um, let's select our first color swatch and paste it into the diffuse and see if that helps out at all. And that does help out in that our character is orange, but um, it's still being shaded kind of like a Lambert. I'm not getting that cartoony feel. So let's tweak a few diffuse settings. Number one, the size. I want to change that from 0.5 to 1. And you'll see that this size setting increases the size of the diffuse area that's being highlighted by the lights. So uh, I know that a value of one will work well for this. And then for our ramp, by default, the input is set to shader. I wanna change this to result instead. And now I feel like we've entered the cartoon realm. So let's try tweaking our ramp so that it's not a solid gradient all the way from beginning to end. Let's drag up the dark value and also drag down the lighter value. Kind of meet in the middle because the way you can think of this is uh, the further we drag down the light colored flag, then our highlights will begin to match that color better. As we drag up the uh, darker flag, our shadows will begin to match that color. And also the line in between the two 
will become more contrasted. So uh, let's see what that does to it. And it looks like I dragged the lower flag a little bit too high. So let's take that down. Yeah, that's certainly better. Um, what I want is a two-toned approach where the highlights are all one solid color and the shadows are also one solid color. I don't want any of this gradient stuff happening because it takes away from the cartoon effect. So let's try making the gap between our two flags in our ramp a little bit um, closer together. Okay, that didn't seem to change very much. How about we try to change our interpolation type from linear to ease, see if that changes anything. No, we're still getting those gradients on the right uh, leg and foot. So how about we change the smooth value? Let's try going up first to 0.2. Doesn't seem to do much. How about we go down to 0.05. That's not doing anything for the gradients that we see here, but it is tightening up this line in between um, highlight and shadow. So I'll switch to slot two so we can see that change and make the smooth value 0.2 again. Hitting Alt-J to switch between the two, you can see um, how tight the contrast becomes with that lower value. And I think I'll leave it at that lower value, 0.05. And uh, I think I'll go back to the ramp and try to adjust my flags to get rid of these gradients. Yeah, pulling them tighter is definitely helping. So how about I bring down the flags together just a little bit. Man, we're almost, almost rid of it. What if I increase the value of my second flag? Just so the shadow is not so much darker. Okay, narrowing the gap to be really, really small has pretty much taken care of it. But, um, we can also change the interpolation from ease to uh, constant and see if that helps out. Usually when I try that with a tune shader, I get a lot of noticeable artifacts, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, on the right leg, you can see that we get kind of a stippling effect in place of our gradient. So that can be a cool look, I guess, if that's what you're looking for. But uh, I'll leave it to be smoother. I think it's less noticeable at linear, or not linear, um, the ease interpolation mode. And with that, I'll call the Tune Shader complete. Uh, then let's jump over to our eyeball mesh and add two material slots. In the first one, let's go grab our Tune Orange Shader and hit the plus button to duplicate the shader. Let's call it uh, Tune White. And then in the second slot, let's uh, add either one of the Tune Shaders, duplicate it with the plus button and call it Tune Blue. And for Tune White, all I need to do is uh, choose my color swatches and take my saturation down to zero. Also on my flags. And that gives us a white tune shader. Then select the uh, tune blue, click the diffuse color swatch, and let's drag up the hue value until we reach the blue side. So I think a value of 0.6 will be good. I'm going to copy that value. Click on each of my um, ramp flag swatches and paste it in the hue to get to the blue side. And now we have a blue tune shader, all with the same parameters so that the colors will look uniform. Now tab into edit mode on our eyeball mesh. And let's try and select the iris to apply our blue tune shader. And uh, I'm using alt select to um, grab an edge loop and then control plus to grow that selection. And then I'll use C to circle select the remaining verts. And that selection looks good. Assign the blue shader and then do the same to this eye. And then select our teeth geometry and uh, add the white shader. Let's do a render. And now we're finished with our material creation. So let's turn our focus over to freestyle. First, enabling it in the render settings down at the bottom, then jumping over to the uh, render layers context, scrolling down and uh, adding a freestyle line set, then uh, rendering the default setup. 
And that's not a bad start, but we certainly want to customize our uh, line set selection. So let's see, under selection by, visibility is good, and uh, we're only looking at visible lines, not uh, hidden edges. Edge types are enabled, which uh, we'll want to customize, and then image border, that's fine, all that's good. As far as the edge types, let's just single out silhouette to see what that looks like. And that looks the same. I guess border and crease weren't really contributing to our edge detection. So going down the list, we have contour, which we know only renders lines around the extreme edge of our geometry, which silhouette is already taken care of. But uh, we do get some gaps in our strokes. So in order to fix that, first I'll try to enable face smoothness. And that took care of the gaps nicely. So how about suggestive contours? Let's see what that does. That starts to do some interesting things. Uh, I like what it's trying to do with the brow by detecting that shape because we weren't getting any information from silhouette alone. But I don't like all these um, little marks uh, randomly across the body nor do I like them on the ground. So let's see if we can't tweak that um, advanced option KR derivative epsilon from zero to, uh, let's try one. That certainly got rid of all the body marks, but um, we also got rid of too many in the brow. So how about we lower that value to, let's try 0.1. Okay, so that does some uh, interesting things, but uh, I don't think I'm going to use suggestive contours in the end. But uh, what I have learned from this is that I want to see more of the brows showing up in our freestyle strokes. So let me render that again with just a silhouette edge types enabled. And see in the brow we have very little indication of what's actually happening. So we're losing a lot of the uh, emotion in the face, or rather the expression. So instead of leaving the brows to be calculated by suggestive contours, how about I just uh, tab into edit mode on our mesh and select specific edges that I want to show up and have strokes drawn on them. Then this little bit on uh, his left side. And uh, while I'm at it, if we look at the eyes, I really want a consistent distinction between the body orange color and our eyeball white color. So uh, while I'm still in edit mode, how about I select an edge on our eyelid with Alt uh, Select. Let's do it on both sides. Control E, mark freestyle edge, and then enable edge marks in our edge types and render in slot two. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. And uh, we get that uh, expression in his face coming through the freestyle lines. Let's see, what else do we have in the list? Uh, ridge and valley, I know is not gonna give me what I want, uh, nor is crease because our mesh is so smooth that, um, well, I'll just do a test, even a value of like, 175 where 180 is the maximum and we'll draw nearly all of our lines, we'll still get um, no lines from this value. So yeah, no additional lines even with such a high crease value. So we'll turn that back to zero. I'll disable the advanced option since I'm not using suggestive contour or ridge and valley and uh, disable crease. Let's see, external contour is not important. But material boundary, that can be useful because of my eyeball meshes that have two different materials assigned. Let's render that. Yeah, that really completes our uh, cartoon edge style um, for those eyes. And uh, yeah, now that we've established a line set that we like, let's move on to uh, the line style. And as far as strokes, color, and alpha, I'll leave all that the same for now, but um, I know I'll want to change my thickness. And let's leave these first settings uh, at their default values and add the along stroke modifier because I want my strokes to look kind of painterly um, where with a paintbrush, you start the stroke and it starts out skinny. And then as you push through the stroke, the line gets thicker. And then as you let off to end the stroke, um, it gets thinner and comes to a point again. So to achieve that, um, in the along stroke modifier, instead of a linear interpolation, let's use curve. And uh, the way that the curve is now, at the beginning of our stroke will be a needle point, and then at the end of our stroke, it will be its max thickness, just a linear interpolation along the stroke. 
but we want the start and end point to be the same, uh, very thin. So let's add a point in the middle and then drag our end point all the way down and now drag our middle point all the way up. Let's see what that looks like. The lines are way too skinny and that is because our max value is set to one which overrides this thickness value. So let's make that four instead. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, it looks very cartoony and kind of painterly the way that the stroke starts out skinny, then gets thicker and ends uh, skinny. But we do get some problems now. Uh, the edge marks around my brow um, becomes kind of dashed and looks like artifacts also around our eyeballs. So first, let's try uh, in the geometry tab, let's try adding a Bezier curve modifier. Leave the error percentage at 10, and the idea here is by hopefully smoothing the geometry that's being calculated with a Bezier uh, interpolation, it will smooth out the edge marks around the brow and also the lines around our eyeball. So let's see if that helps. And no, that doesn't help with the artifacts in our brow and eyeballs, but um, if we take a step back, it's kind of a cool look. Certainly very stylized, but even our lines are being pulled away from the geometry, which, uh, yeah, that's certainly interesting. But uh, for this image, I want the lines to adhere a little more closely to the geometry. So let's turn our error percentage down to two. Yeah, I really like that look a lot, but I still need to fix what's happening in the brows and the eyeballs. So let's jump over to our strokes menu where we have uh, control over the chaining. And I think that's where the problem lies, namely with this same object toggle. Let's turn that off and try rendering. Yeah, that pretty much fixes it. Uh, it looks like the problem was um, due to the eyeball geometry being a separate object from the body geometry. Uh, it wasn't able to chain together the strokes to make them uh, unified. So uh, that looks a lot better. Um, there's just one more thing I want to fix, and it has to do with these rogue stroke marks here. They look like very, very tiny strokes here on the right eye and also right here on the left eye. And we can get rid of those down here uh, in the selection options where we can give it a, a minimum length to be drawn. And uh, if these lines don't match that minimum length, then they won't be drawn. So let's start out with, um, let's say 20. And yeah, that looks like the right value where these uh, small strokes did not meet that minimum requirement. Let's uh, look over our entire mesh, make sure we didn't lose any other strokes, which we did actually in the arm. So maybe 20 is too high. Let's jump that down to 10. That brings back our missing strokes on our hands and arms. And also we uh, still are missing the little strokes here in the eyes. So yeah, I believe we are done. So that is Cartoony Baker. And even though he is included in the source files, I would encourage you to grab your own model and create your own cartoon style. Um, if you choose to post it in the image gallery below, I'd really like to see your spin on this visual style.